Hey, hey guys, this is MC here representing Web3 TV. Uh, this is uh, Web3 Wednesday, and I, I'm here with Jack. Uh, he, he definitely, I noticed him, he asked uh, a lot of interesting questions to the uh, panel speakers and, you know, talking about, you know, Web3, the security, a lot of interesting stuff. So, you know, I'm actually kind of curious to know your origin story in the crypto and what do you do? So, hey, welcome to Web3 TV. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a generally a curious person. Um, so I uh, originally from uh, Hong Kong. I lived in London for uh, just over a decade, uh, building a number of uh, Web2 ventures. I recently have um, relocated to Dubai uh, to start my third business, which is in the crypto payment space. Uh, so I've been in the crypto payments space not very long but i've been in the, in the industry since 2017 industry as an investor uh, i've been tracking the payments use case for since 2017 and now i'm going head in and moving to dubai and uh yeah and let's see where it goes oh that no that's really cool and i think what's really interesting to me is you, you mentioned about uh, crypto payments uh, you know uh, we keep hearing about you know like metaverse, AI, I don't know, uh, space travel, I don't know, all these interesting trends. But crypto payments is really interesting to me. That is, I would consider infrastructure, right? The the base layer, the the solid foundation. So, but why crypto payments? Uh, I guess what makes crypto payments exciting for you? I think when you think about blockchain technology, uh, decentralized, you know. Uh, you know, technology generally speaking, like what is the one of the core use cases? And the core use case is payments. Um, when you think about like blockchain versus traditional fiat rails, right? It offers a far more efficient, far cheaper, far s better experience overall. Uh, and, and generally, when you when you when you think about like the the use case around also you, you know, and how the crypto industry has evolved, right? Like for the past, you know, as, as far as we've known it, you know, crypto has been synonymous with speculative, you know, gains, get rich quick. But the reality is, is that when you connect blockchain technology with traditional fiat systems and making it interoperable in that sense, actually, you know, you can make money transfer far faster, far cheaper, far better than traditional fiat systems. We're starting off with um, helping merchants to get paid in crypto and then making the whole entire experience as easy and as fast as car payments, right? And I think that's the best way to describe what we're trying to do today. No, no I love it. Uh, no, I, I, I just uh, when you mentioned about crypto payments, to me, crypto is supposed to, it has to be faster, easier, and reliable. Just a seamless experience for each and every one of us. Uh, it's but it's interesting you mentioned, you, are you just focusing only on merchants or are you also trying to like say, educate the users to, you know, spend their money in crypto? I think timing is everything in anything that you do when you build. And I think today, like uh, consumer adoption is still quite limited to a number of markets like LATAM, Africa, Southeast Asia, where consumers need to hold, you know, some form of cryptocurrency because it hedges against um, the volatility of fiat currencies, right? And so you look at deal, you know, 6% of their payroll is now remitted through stable coins. Um, and so, and so, and that's because that's mostly for emerging markets. And so today that the use case is more for um, businesses that are servicing the Web3 economy. So software companies, infra companies are servicing that in, in, in the section. Second is like, you know, we have Web2 companies that are uh, using crypto payments because there's a need for it. Because, you know, maybe they are in, 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 in um, industries that are considered more high risk, right? And so, therefore, they need crypto payments because it avoids chargebacks. It avoids, you know, the, the, you know some of these challenges around FX or settlements and so on. And then the final thing is, it's like actually more and more traditional web web two fiat psps so payment service providers are, are very inquisitive and curious about how they can offer crypto acceptance for the traditional commercial network so we're seeing the demand in that way but consumer adoption will still be some time because ultimately consumers paying in crypto fully requires them to have their pnl in crypto their balance sheet in crypto and so therefore that 
takes time to disseminate in, in, amongst the ecosystem? Oh uh, man, I man, I totally agree with you. I mean, that's uh, I, did I, I think uh, I'm in definitely in alignment with you. But I also uh, talked to some other people who are also similar in the crypto payments space. They also would uh, agree with you too. So uh, when they, when you mentioned about the users, like your regular Joes and Janes out there, you know. Um, I think it's going to take some time, but uh, I think for me, uh, being in Web3, you know, I, I want to bring the future to the now. So anyways, uh, before you go, I want to ask you just one last question. You know, just uh, we've been talking about Web3, the economy, but just for the, our users out there, what does the term Web3 mean to you? The reason I ask is everyone has a, you know, their own uh, meaning. So we'd love to hear from you. I think it's a general categorization of like, how advanced you are in, in, in that way, right? And, and I think when, when I think about Web1, it's like my background has been in marketplace and classifieds. So Web1 is like your yellow pages, right? It's like the classified ads where you list everything online and it's like, you know, it's like an online storefront. Web2 is where, you know, um, content is composable by users. And I think that's the generation for user generated content, right? Uh, whether it's like listing products, services, listing your own day, you know, telling people about your own day or whatever it might be. And Web3 is about ownership, right? It's about how you can own and have control over the data that you have or the, what you, you know, share. But equally as well, like the, the inverse of that is that you, the, the, the information is completely transparent, right? So, you know, decentralized ledger technology, you know, open blockchains, all of that is all about ownership. And so, I think you know there's many different terminologies of this, different things, but ultimately I think it's like how the evolution of technology, how communication, rails, internet, etc., you know, advancements, centralized, decentralized, whatever, like whatever offers the best user experience, customers will ultimately win. So you know, we consider ourselves as a Web two company, service in Web three, so therefore we are Web two point five. You know, like, what does that mean? No, that's good. No, that's that's really cool. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, you know, uh, before you go, let, let, let's. Uh, you know, we got we got a lot of new people entering into the the Web three space, and um, whether they're founders or whether they're users. I mean, it, it, do, do you have like advice for people who are looking into Web three space? Like, just uh, you feel that it's important to share. I think the first thing is like. Um, you know, for me, for me as like as a Web two entrepreneur and founder, I've built you know several businesses in Web two. I felt like okay, coming into Web three is quite a daunting thing because there's a lot of technical terminologies, a lot of um, jargon that one has to understand. Now, I think if you're willing to put your time and effort into understanding the space, you then get to an inflection point where you then become relatively native to it. No one is a master, no one's a guru. If they call themselves a guru, they're a scam artist, and so. Really, it's about you know you. Uh, there's no there's no there's no anxiety. Just just go for it and try to understand it. You know, it's an open world. You're early. You know, listening to this, you're early. Um, and so you know, go for it. You know, I think for my own personal journey, it's been about about 18 months coming in, having no knowledge whatsoever, to now building a company. You know, Boomfy. Uh, we've just raised uh, 3.8 million dollars in our seed round. Uh, from you know very notable venture capitalists, strategic investors, founders of the most notable Web3 businesses. Now, am I a guru? No, I'm not. Do I know everything about Web3? No, I'm, I don't. And I'm learning every day. And I think that's the mindset you have to have when you come into the space. Man, Jack, uh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you sharing that. You know, the message of being a lifelong student. You know, and uh, and to have the humility in the space because it's still evolving. So I really appreciate you saying that. I know a lot of people can really uh, receive a lot of value for what you said. So I thank you for your service. Thank you for helping uh, us raise that uh, crypto adoption to the world. So thank you so much. Anyway, fam. Hey, we gotta go. So y'all be good. Y'all be safe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.